Well, I've been really discerning about myself lately and noticing that, like, I love to hang out with people. You know, I'm here. I love, you know, being here, you know, talking about this. And, uh, but whenever you put me behind a steering wheel, you know, I, if someone, if someone cuts in front of me, what the, what the heck is wrong with you? You know, I'm like, I just start like getting really mad. I get road rage pretty much. And, uh, you know, people can be that way. You know, they could, uh, some people might be, um, the opposite where they don't like people but they're like oh that person should have known better about cutting in front of me oh you know they, they need to learn <laughs> or something but you know I just I just tend to be just the, the complete opposite I love hanging out with people but I you know hate it whenever people end up being like a little you know just kind of mess up and I'm not sometimes forgiving or something and back at home I'm not forgiving about my mistakes or if I even make like a 95. I'm like, why couldn't I just get that one question right? So. Well, so in a different person behind the wheel, I love that concept because I can definitely <laughs> relate to that. Double lives, how it affects us, how we can support one another. Um, I mean, I, I do think we all live a double life just because like you'll see it's I mean it's like everybody else has said you'll see somebody out and you'll be like you know, they're in a good mood. They must always be in a good mood, you know, and then they go home and you know, they're you know just just themselves and or you know or they're dealing with their problems and dealing with everything I, th I think the best way to deal with it though is for you know like she said just to like be real with it and stuff and anytime somebody brings up a problem that they're having be like you know hey you know I struggle with that too and, you know just being honest and everything excellent for me I don't have a double life I'm the same person all the time and I have to keep it a hundred percent um, but I'm a people watcher, so I notice a lot of people that are they're one way at work and they're they're another way at home, and I think that's what leads to nervous breakdowns and depression because you're always trying to hold up that standard, and you can't keep balance like that. So I don't. I mean, I know some people live in double lives, but personally, I I, I don't. Wow, you're very interesting. I love the different takes because everybody's situation is different and each one has a different story to tell. Now we're going to go backwards to number six. Do you feel there are enough helpful resources that are already available in society and do you feel they're readily available? Um, and then I'd love to follow that up with what resources would you like to see developed? Maybe they haven't, maybe they have. But um, as you look in society or as you go to the inspiration section at Walmart, for example, like for me, I would avoided all of that. When I was going through my deepest times, I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to um, read a pick yourself up by your own bootstraps type book because I was feeling low. What was I, what strength was I going to pick myself up with? You know what I mean? Um, so, and then part of that, so part of it was I didn't know about some of the reasons resources because I've been doing research lately and it's blown my mind some of the counseling centers right here in Chattanooga and national and international resources um, that we'll be giving you guys today as we leave um, but at the same time I wasn't seeking those things either at the time that I was struggling does that make sense so there was two sides for me some of it I didn't know about but some of it I didn't want to know about but what about you guys do you feel there's enough helpful resources and what would you like to see developed we'll just start back at this end what do you think change it up a little bit well, I, I'm not sure of the resources the resources that's out there available because I've never really looked into it. Um, I always look within the, because I have strong faith and um, I have a strong uh, family background. So if there's something that comes up, that's who I tend to lean on. So I don't know of any outside resources. Okay, very interesting. I mean, I know there are outside resources, I guess. You know, I mean, like I know they're there. I've never personally taken advantage of any of them. Because, like her, I do have um, a strong family upbringing and stuff. And, like, I, I do have a relationship with God and everything. So that's something that I can lean on personally. So, I mean, but, I mean, I'm glad they're out there for other people who don't have the same opportunity and the same background I do. Or a medical situation or things like that as well, right. Yeah, I have great resources, but the problem with a lot of other people's, um, like if they're struggling with depression, is that if they want to go see a psychiatrist, it's a lot of money to go to that. And if they don't have, you know, financial or any sort of financial plan or they weren't able to keep up with their financial stuff, that they're kind of starting to, like, get bankrupt or something, you know, how are they supposed to get what they need if they even if they're going to be like well yeah i do need help but they don't have money for it so 
Right, so financial, that's a whole other side to it. Especially in communities like where I come from that uh, growing up we had nothing. We couldn't afford dental care, let alone, literally, let alone. I didn't see a dentist in my 20s. So we couldn't afford that, let alone go see someone that charged for special counseling. I'm sure my parents would have found a way if they had known. But, um, yeah, that was definitely an issue for us. I actually have a response to the financial issue um, because there are plenty of counseling centers that um, are not only on school campuses that have just, like, people available that, you know, I College campuses are probably going to be either very cheap or sometimes free. It just kind of depends on where you go to school. Um, but also at, like, their CBI Counseling Center that's kind of sort of out the way from here on Macaulay Avenue, um, they have graduate students on hand that are cheaper fees. Um, a lot of people's health insurance will actually cover this um, because, I mean, that's where a lot of the payments come from because there might be a cover charge. It's the same thing as, like, going to a doctor because a lot of people see that it can be – um, clinically diagnosed, um, you can get help with that, but sometimes not always. I mean, you could be having struggles because, you know, your parents got divorced or you suffered from abuse and you really need somebody besides, you know, your own family if that's not quite enough resources. Or something. There are some larger struggles that only people that actually know how to address it appropriately she can go see. Okay, so there's some interesting possible resources, but do people know about them? Do you feel those resources are available and what would you like to see developed if not? First of all, I think there are a lot of resources. You watch TV, there are hotlines, websites you can go to. If you need to talk to somebody, you can just call any number. There are churches, teachers, counselors everywhere. And what I would like to see developed is, you know, a lot of times when you go to people, it's always the authority, someone older, you know, older people and everything. I want to see, like, people around my age or maybe a little older where, you know, if – someone around our age that we need help. We can go to people who are dealing with the same thing, but at the same time, they've overcome, you know, some of the struggles that I'm going through, and they can help me with it, and we can relate because we're around the same age. Instead of I have to go to, like, you know, older pastor or, you know, and then, like, a lot of people say they have family. I have family, too. I have, you know, um, my faith, and, you know, that's, that's fine and everything. But sometimes you don't always go to that. You know, sometimes you may not always have that. You know, your family, going they're going through their own problems. And a lot of times I would keep stuff in myself, you know, and I would say, well, I don't want to be selfish. I don't want to put what I'm going through on them because they're going through stuff. And sometimes you do need an outside source who is there for you, you know, when and they don't have to worry about their problems. They're, they're there for you. And it's nice to be able to go to that, you know, that person or whatever it is, and they can really be there for you and listen to what you're going through. Excellent. I believe there are a lot of good outside sources. Um, you just have to be able to find the right one that works for you. Like she said, um, it is. it would be better to have one where they're actually going through the same struggles that you are so you can talk to someone who, you feel, who relates to the same problems that you're having. Okay. Do you feel like those resources are out there? Yeah, there's resources out there for pretty much everyone, you know, like kids, grown-ups. Because me, as young, as young, I had a lot of depression. So I go to the boys' club, you know. I talk to anybody at the boys club or a football coach or anybody I know that always smiling or look like they could bring someone up. But boys clubs and stuff like that is a pretty good spot for someone to talk. That's a great resource. I hadn't thought about that, honestly. Um, now that I think about it and hearing everyone talk, I never would have thought of all these resources. And like I, my family lives in another state, so that's another place I wouldn't have gone. And I'm not religious. I wasn't brought up that way. So for me, it was... For me, I would have to take my own happiness into my own hands. But now that I think of it, there are a ton of resources. So, Wow, very interesting. So many different perspectives on this. Um, so lastly, as we uh, kind of follow up here, what advice do you, would you all be able to give someone? If you were sitting across from someone right now and they said, I'm going through a really – I had a girl come up to me yesterday as we were handing out the free stories – and um, she said, I'm really struggling right, right now, but I don't want to put anything on the Facebook group page that we started. The, it's called Not Trapped Anymore. Um, some of you already added, I think. But she didn't want to put anything on that because she didn't want anybody else to see it. So I was like, just send me a private message. But she was like, I'm really struggling now. What do I tell somebody if I'm looking across from them right now? If you were doing that right now, what would you say to someone? What, what advice would you give from personal experience? Or, or what would you direct them to? And let's start um, at this end. Are you comfortable beginning that topic? Um. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, I guess I would say to find somebody like she found you or try to try to find someone to talk to a family member or if you are religious maybe go there um, for me it was getting out and meeting new people because I didn't have friends here and that's what really pulled me out of my slump I think so sitting across from someone what would you suggest some advice first I say look in a mirror 
make sure you put it all into yourself first before you even go ask somebody. Don't just go get information. Make sure you secure about yourself first before you going around trying to help anybody else or get any advice. But I always looked in the mirror and say, PJ, you doing this? No, nah, I ain't paid that. PJ, you doing? No, nah, I really ain't. So that's how I really, I really talk to myself first and then I get more advice. So That's where it started for me as well and then it grew. If someone came to me and they needed advice, I would try to give them the best advice I could. I mean, every person is different. They have their own struggles, but um, I would try to listen. First and foremost, everyone needs to just listen. You know, when someone's coming to you, they obviously have a problem and they need your help. So I would, for most, listen to them, give them the best advice I could, and if not, then I would send them to resources that could really help them in their problems. I would say, I would tell them to find the number one person that they trust who's going to be honest with them and who's not going to just tell them anything, you know, and don't they don't really care what it is they're going through. <coughs> who's be honest with them, who cares about them. Um, if they don't have that person, you know, they can see, you know, go to a church. You know, some people, they're not into that. Um, like this, I would give them numbers. You know, we watch TV all the time, and I would say, call this person, or I would try to give them advice, and I'm going to be honest with them and let them know that I care and be sincere about it. Right. I would say the biggest thing would be to, you know, for the other person is to just ask questions of themselves and of people around them to kind of understand what's going on, um, to, you know, like I said before, but get the bigger picture. Um, you know, they can be, you know, I would definitely say go to church from my background. I mean, that's kind of an obvious um, for, you know, people of the Christian faith, but also just, you know, if that's not a part of your life, being able to ask those questions helps you kind of understand um, kind of where, you know, just say, I'm upset about something. Well, why, you know, what's going on? Is there something that I'm missing here? Um, and be able to see it as something that you can't address, not something that you're being afflicted with. I think if somebody came to me asking for advice, that they took the first step saying that they needed help. And then I would try to walk them through the rest of it. If we needed to go somewhere and find somebody else for them to talk to and get help for them, I think that they would better, um, get through it if they had somebody going through it with them. Right, absolutely. Does anyone from the audience anything? All right, well, thank you so much for joining us at Chat State. I hope you enjoyed this particular episode of a group discussion on these topics. Um, we have some uh, a free story for you guys today. There's also some hope numbers or helplines, I guess you could say, um, that's laminated if you have, want that give away to your friends, or use it for yourself, um, and a lot of other resources on Facebook, like the Not Trapped Anymore group page and some things like that. So check all of that out, and that'll be free for you over here on the other side as you're leaving today. Thank you very much for joining us.